Hi, Kamal. Welcome to the Banking Show. This week, in your column, you've talked about the bull run of PSU banks. Now, before we get into the future prospects of the PSU banks, can you explain why the bull run and why so much investor interest in PSU banks? Yeah, thanks, Uchika. If you have seen that uh, the last year or so, or even a little more, the PSU bank's performance was far better than the stock market to how uh, how the investors have reacted to the PSU banks. So in other words, um, uh, you know, the stock market, their pricing was not in sync with their performance. So now we are what we are seeing is that the PSU banks are being re-rated. You know, investors have understood their worth, and there are many reasons behind this. Uh, uh, they have gone through the hell that 2015, 16, 17, all those cleaning up, etc., that happened. They are uh, much, much less uh, adventurous now. The hard mentality is no more there. Their risk management, etc., has got far better. Underwriting capability better. Their growth is pretty good. Uh, so all these, actually, what you've seen that there was a time. When if a bank is trading one time book, people used to say, oh, wow. Now, now you look at even the State Bank of India. Many of the banks are one and a half time, two times book they're trading. So that's that's a great story. And of course, uh, uh, in adding to the uh, adding fire to the fuel or fuel, what, what do you call it? Fuel, fuel to the fire or fire to the fuel. So you, you just think, um, is this the privatization story? And the, the um, two banks, uh, two pub, pub public sector bank would be privatized. That's the announcement in budget 2021. It's not yet happened. So that speculation also is on. So all put together, it's a good story. And investors have uh, discovered the PSUs. They took little it. It's, uh, they, the banks are being re-rated. And that's it was happening. So then naturally, the second question is, how long do you think this interest will last? You talked of a few factors in your uh, uh, in your piece as well about rising capex and the fight for deposits. What are some of the things that will play out for PSU banks? Well, which can go wrong is uh, the quality of assets. In fact, if you see the fresh slippages happening and the credit cost is going up, that will be a big negative. But if you see the bankers have been saying that, no, I mean, nothing to be worried about. It's it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a good story is there. And even the country's largest bank, uh, one of the top 50 in the world, State Bank of India's net NPA is less than 1%. And most banks gross and net NPAs, even though in relative term, they are a uh, little worse than the, uh, not as good rather, not as good as some of the large private banks, but uh, historically they are the, in the best position, I would say. So if that is taken care of, then there are two advantages that the PSU banks have over others. One is this, when the, when the fight for deposit, particularly low cost deposits um, is pretty fierce, uh, they have their branch network. So the CASA, they will be in a better position to attract, mobilize the deposits. And uh, that's the most important part of the biggest challenge the Indian banking sector is facing at this point of time. And the second part is this, you know, we are talking about CapEx. Uh, uh, private sectors is still uh, shying away uh, from investing. Uh, government uh, CapEx is there. Uh, the, the interim budget also announced uh, the kind of money that the government will put in infrastructure and other areas and all. And if you see that, uh, the private sector banks are not very excited about, about the corporate loans, the long-term loans, which public sector banks and there could have been in the past uh, government pressure on them, etc. But by nature, their their understanding of this project financing, etc. Uh, probably, I would not call it better, but because their willingness to support and they, they see also uh, right now in their, their, their approach has changed. Uh, if they see money in it, if they see interest income in it, they will go forward and they will move ahead uh, to support the capex ahead of the pub, private sector bank. So which means uh, uh, they, they will, their interest income also will go up. So both oh. on the assets and liability side, uh, they, are, uh, they are poised uh, to continue now, moving away from traditional banking, we are seeing a lot of action happen in fintech sector. And recently, uh, there was a meeting that FM took with fintech companies, which is not something we see often for, for any sector. And uh, we had the FSDC meeting also, which talked a lot about uh, the financial services sector. Uh, how do you see some of these developments in context of India's focus on building its digital public infrastructure? Ruchika, I mean, uh, I, I really don't know uh, you see, the what is the provocation? The provocation is the RBI action on the PTM Payments Bank. Uh, 
Now, I repeat, it's a Paytm payments bank. What does it have to do anything with fintech? But it came as a shock and surprise uh, to the industry. And then suddenly the talk started about that RBI is anti-innovation. We have a regulator, which I would not like to name uh, any, any individual or entities, but that's the campaign. Now the entire thing, the issue has been hijacked by uh, certain people. Uh, I don't think they have huge credibility in the industry. And then make it a, they made it a campaign uh, saying that here is a regulator. And I mean, somebody has gone on record. There are 60 year old plus people who, who, who rule the Bank of India. What do they know about FinTech and all? But where does it come from? Is the action against Paytm Bank? Paytm Bank is not equivalent to innovations in FinTech. So entire thing is um, misplaced. There was a there has been a campaign, and it is a misguided, misdirected campaign. And uh, rightly, the finance minister and the uh, finance ministry and Reserve Bank of India have come to the fore to allay all the fears and all the uh, I would say the misinformed campaign. That look, we have nothing to do. I mean, we are not against uh, we are not against uh, um, innovation. You would be you should be innovative. Look for innovation. But that does not be by being innovative. That does not give you the freedom uh, to ignore the regulations. And uh, I mean, suppose uh, somebody uh, whoever has invented the car, and if there is no brake in the car, there is no uh, no care for everything and all. You can move anywhere you want. You can maul people. You can uh, um, you know you can kill people. You can do whatever you want. That's not done. I mean, um, if you look at the Paytm payments bank history, the KYC norm, why with, I mean, how with extremely scant respect uh, the KYC norms were violated. Now, KYC norm has nothing to do with fintech. What is there? It's the basic thing you have. It's a basic hygiene factor. So I think these are all misinformed campaign and campaign. And to to uh, to contain this campaign and to actually uh, reassure the industry, look, look, there's nothing to be afraid of. You be innovative and take the way forward. Uh, we we'll talk about the public infrastructure uh, for payments or everything else where India has been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, you move ahead, but that does not mean the the freedom to innovate does not mean violation of. Uh, regulations you have to be you have to have respect for regulation so there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of the tough is uh, extremely uh, uh, tough is there and india has been in the forefront globally when it comes to uh, payment infrastructure and the story will continue so clearly this is also given the opportunity to the government to look at the sector in a, a macro perspective and make sure that innovation is not curbed but at the same time companies follow regulations uh, thank you so much, Tamar, for putting all that in perspective. So good to have you. We'll see you next week. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. That led success so high. I will achieve. I will fly high. I am the eye in SBI. I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI. I the banker the to every Indian.